count the cost. Not everybody's going to love you. Not everybody's going to be good to you. I started telling a story, and I got cut off here by another thought in my mind, but I mean, Lisa, I've shared this with the church many times. Maybe some of you hadn't heard it. We walked into a house. As I said, I handed him the Bible. But one of the men got offended because I offended his wife. So he walks up and he punches me in the chest. And, boy, you know what I wanted to do in the flesh? Hmm? My flesh said, okay, I'll just break this little dude down. Yeah. At that time, I could have, Jimmy. All right? <laughs> that wasn't good enough. I just kept insisting on God's word. So he blowed a hawker in my face. Now, I don't know how many of y'all had that happen to you, but that's hard to take. That's hard. Lisa was standing right beside me, tears running down her face. Well, I said my piece, and I walked out the door. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and told me to buy him a load of firewood. Now, you all have heard this part. In the flesh, I wanted to stack it right in the middle of her living room and set it on fire. I thought that would be the best place to put the load of firewood. But the Lord told me to buy it. I bought it from somebody else, and they delivered it anonymously. And as far as I know, they to this day still don't know who delivered the load of firewood. I don't want them to know. One of them's already gone to heaven, <laughs> I hope. But bless God, let me tell you something. When God tells you to do something, and when the enemy comes against you, you show the enemy by your faith and listening to God and not the enemy. You hear me, church? you got to have your ears tuned to what God is going to say to you, not listening to what the devil is trying to prompt you to do. And I'm going to tell you sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes when we're in the flesh, it's hard to do. Amen? But we, gotta, we live by faith, not by sight. We live by the things that God tells us in our spirit man. And we go past the natural man. And we obey the spirit man because it is the counsel of God. Sometimes God will tell you to do some things that are hard. You don't want to do. Bless God, you've got to press on. You've got to step out in faith. And you've got to be obedient. But the disciples here in this chapter, they'd come against a, a, a situation where one was filled with demons. And they prayed for them. And, and nothing happened. Huh? We come against this, some of us here in the church, recently. Let me tell you what, the devil is powerful. Don't mock him. Don't mock him. Don't laugh at him. Don't scoff at him. The only right we have is in the Word of God to stand against him. Amen. I've heard people make fun of evil spirits. Let me tell you what. I want to caution you on that. That is not your job. Jesus Christ will bind Satan. Amen. He'll tell Michael the archangel to go take care of business. <laughs> and bless God, he'll do it. But that day has not come yet, church. And as long as we're drawing breath, we're going to be oppressed and Satan's going to try to deceive you. Satan even wants you to make a fool of yourself. But we've got to stand on godly principles and do things God's way. Amen? Stand when all you can do, just stand. Huh? That's right. That's what God's Word's telling us. Sometimes the enemy may come against you, and you may seem like you're in a flood, being attacked on every side. Just stand in your faith. Huh? If the enemy won't leave at your prayer, find a prayer warrior. Find somebody that's full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? To lay hands on that one and demand. I, I, I was reading this scripture Last night, I got in the Word, and I got lost in it last night. Let me tell you, it was so sweet and refreshing to get God's Word in your spirit. But when Jesus told the demons to go out, he said, and not return. Some people that are demon-possessed, if they don't put Christ in their life, amen, 
the demons will come back. They'll come back, and they'll show their ugly selves again. One of the things as we start here in this lesson, and I want you to, I want you to listen very clearly. The first things the demons did when Jesus approached him is they kind of scoffed him, mocked him. Okay? Sister Peggy, I walked in your home the other day, and what was the first thing the demon said to Mike Tolliver? You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You can't do nothing. Amen? <laughs> well, you know what? I know I ain't no hypocrite. And I prayed all the way there. Didn't know what, what I was walking into. Didn't have a clue. <laughs> but I tell you what. When we laid hands on him, something got angry. Something began to mock. Something began to ridicule. Remember the seven sons of Cephas when they went in and tried to denounce the demons and cast them out and they wasn't even saved? What did that one man do? He tore all their clothes off and sent them out of the house naked. I'm here to tell you this is not something funny. It's something very serious. Amen. I can almost see these jokers coming out of the house. <laughs> Amen. Naked as a jaybird. Now that would have been funny. I'd have laughed at that. <laughs> because they didn't have the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Matter of fact, they even tried to buy it. Their daddy did. Tried to buy the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, church. You don't have to buy the Holy Ghost. It's for all of those who believe. Amen? That's something we need to realize. When they asked Paul, they said, well, who is this gift for? Amen? They'd been hearing messages being preached to them in their own tongue by these simple-minded fishermen and such. And they said, well, how do they know this? The Holy Ghost knows everything. Amen? He knows every secret, every depth of your heart. Satan knows it, too, by what you act out. Huh? And what Satan knows, he attacks the weakest spot of your life. Now, I, I've had people try to tell me that demons don't exist. Before I ever dreamed of being in this church, I was invited to come here. I met with a state trooper, a female state trooper. Amen. Brother Marvin was here. Brother Tony McCutcheon. Myself. And, and they, 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 this lady, she says, I know a young lady that's trapped by demonic forces. And she wants them gone. She said, I've been to every pastor in this town until I finally found you. You know what every preacher told her? That's not for today. Satan don't do that today. Yes, he does. But you know the good news, as I was saying, what Peter told the crowd of people there after the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 or so, <laughs> Peter told them, he said, this is for you. This is for your children. This is for your children's children. And as for many as our Lord our God shall call. Amen. I'm glad you all know that. <laughs> you've been called by God, if you've been saved, amen, you've been set apart, amen, just ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, and God will do it, because he honors his word. Let me tell you how you know for sure you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You will in be endued with power from on high. Ain't that what the word says? You will be endued from power from on high. In other words, there will be a spiritual boldness that will come upon you that you'll speak the truth even when the truth may get you in trouble. You're quite cracked. Amen. I, I want you to understand the truth will always stand. Now I want you to stand with me. We're going to start in verse 15, chapter 9, the book of Mark. Praise the Lord. Verse 14, excuse me. Verse 14. And when he, being Jesus, 
came to his disciples, he saw a, mul a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What questions ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto you my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he, amen, takes him, he tears him, and he foams, and he gashes at his teeth, and pines away. And I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. They could not. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask right now, Lord, that we will begin to understand we need to be in prayer. We need to cut off the things of the world. We need to walk in the presence and the counsel of your holy word. God, I pray right now, Lord, that we will receive what you have to say to the church this morning. God, that we will walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, I ask these things in Jesus' name. Hide me behind the cross, Father. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. When Jesus came to his disciples, they were transfixed on one thing, this young man. They didn't know why what they had been taught was not working. Jesus has sent them out two by two. Remember that? First thing he told him, he said, go sell your cloak and buy a sword. He didn't send them out not being armed. He sent them out with self-protection. That was from gangsters and such of the day. Thieves. Let me tell you, I believe we still serve the same God. We're not to be idiots. We need to stand with the truth. We need to stand on the principles of God. I believe each of us has the right to protect ourselves. But as they went, amen, they come across a man that had brought his son to them with a need. This man's son was dumb. That meant he could not speak. He had no voice. He couldn't talk to his father or his mother. He couldn't talk to the neighbors. This young man had been seized with this, amen, from his youth, the Bible says. He'd have been attacked by the enemy. And the enemy hadn't only attacked him, the enemy had went into him. There had been a door open that the spirit of demonic power was welcomed into this young man. Praise God. Let me tell you what. That's why we all need to know that we know that we know we're saved. Amen. Because Satan has no power over the children of God. As we go on here, it says, And he saw a great multitude with them. Let me tell you what, when God really starts moving, people come to see what God's doing. Amen? When you see the power of the Lord working in reality, there are those that will show up just to watch. But when they see the power of God, uh, it transfixes them and they begin to be excited and they want to have what you have. Now listen to me very close. But when you go to pray for somebody and you're praying for them with doubt and unbelief, you're saying maybe this is more than I can handle. You know what's going to happen? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You need to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Amen. Don't walk into a blind alley without being willing, amen, to fight the demonic forces that may come against you. Well, wh wh when do I walk in that presence of God? Daily. Every day of your life. You should be prepared spiritually. Amen. You should know that the Father God in heaven has given you the power 
to overcome every demonic force that may come against you. There may be some that sees this at home. I don't know if it's been taped this morning or not. But I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter, amen, what the enemy's bringing against you with the power of the Holy Ghost and being born again. There is nothing that can come against you that you cannot contend with. Amen. We've got to believe this morning. Quit that doubtful prayer. Lord God, I hope. No, I don't hope about nothing about God. I know that my God is real. Amen. I know my God hears my prayer. I know that I can feel the touch of His Spirit. I don't have a doubt when the Spirit of God shows up. Why? Because God is omnipresent. He's here right now. Amen. If you don't feel the power of God, it's because you've turned off the anointing of God in you. Well, I go to church, I just don't feel nothing. Well, some churches are deader than a doornail. Huh? I've been in dead churches. Sit there and listen, and they, 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 they try to entertain you, and they blow fog, and they have lights, and they do all these fancy things. <laughs> Bless God, I ain't never seen anybody saved with fog. <laughs> never seen anybody saved with a flashing light. <laughs> I tell you what, I've seen people saved by the conviction of the Holy Ghost. And you have the power to begin to pray for your lost loved ones. Name them. Name their name daily. Plead with the blood of Jesus Christ to send the anointing of God upon them of conviction. See, I used to not like to be around certain people because every time I got around them, I felt conviction. Why was that? They was walking in the presence of God, and the righteousness was showing outside as much as it was in. Huh? You ever been, <laughs> before you got saved, you ever been around somebody that made you feel a little uncomfortable? Huh? See, I got saved at a young age, and I backslid. <laughs> And then after I backslid, see, I knew the things of God were good. <laughs> but yet I wanted to contend with the world. I wanted to do the things that the flesh wanted to do. So when I'd get around people that was walking in holiness, I always felt shame. That was God speaking to my heart. Here Jesus is walking up to the crowd of people. And, and not one of his apostles, but one of the scribes spoke out of the crowd. And it must have been his son because he said, I brought my son. The disciples prayed for him, but they couldn't remove it. They couldn't remove it. Well, you know what Jesus was thinking? It speaks to this story in other books here in the Bible. You, you know what Jesus' answer was to this? He said, this type of demons come out with prayer and fasting. See, I already said that once. That's twice. Let's go for three times. <laughs> Amen. This type comes out by prayer and fasting. When the demons saw Jesus, amen, they were fearful. Amen. They, they didn't have power. Amen. <laughs> and see, he said, you know, and wherever he, wheresoever he goes, he t it tears him and he foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and pines away. And I spoke to your disciple that they should cast him out and they could not. Now, the pining away, that means he gets by himself. He, he goes and hides. Okay. Him and that demon are communicating together. And he goes by himself and withdraws within himself. You ever seen anybody do that? Huh? They were fighting demonic forces. They want to be by themselves. They don't want to go to church. Amen. But sometimes, let, let me say this. <laughs> Demons aren't cast out by you just simply walking up and telling them to go. That person must be wanting to loose them demons from themselves. There's a battle going on within them. <laughs> Sister Deidre and Sister Peggy were there when one of the demons spoke to me and said, can I come in to you? I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. I'm nice. I'm a nice devil. 
You know what I told him? You can't come in me because God's in here. Amen. Sister Deidre and Sister Peggy started singing songs about the blood. Amen. About the cross. I can't remember every song you sung. I was totally concentrated. But I tell you what, every time you'd hear about the cross or the blood, amen, the demons would shudder. I wish the whole church had been there. I really do. Now, I love that gentleman. I want him to know that. Amen. He was fighting things he had no control over. But I tell you what, the first devil would come out. It's come out of his mouth. He spewed, didn't he? He spewed. I don't know how many of y'all got experience fighting with devils, but let me tell you, they don't like to come out. They'll try to rip the whole person out. The second devil come out happened the same way again. Amen. The third one, he wanted to entertain us a while. <laughs> Told us how nice he was and how, how he'd make things better for me. And he'd just work my life into all oh, these great things. See, they're cunning and conniving. You know, there's a lot of young kids today. They ask demons to come into them for wealth, for prosperity. See, they ask demons to come into them. These little girls used to play with these mirrors and invite the devil to come in. That's right. People get on Ouija boards. Dungeons and Dragons. Don't touch those things. You have no business as a child of God playing with the devil. Amen. Some of you may say, well, I got one of them at home. Throw it away. Best advice, burn it. Amen. We tried to burn a Ouija board here one time, and the thing wouldn't catch on fire until we prayed over it. That's right. But then God consumed it with fire. You said, Brother Mike, things like that don't happen today. Let me tell you something. My God is just as real today as he ever was. Amen. We need to understand. By the power and the authority of God, God uses you as a vessel to speak. You don't cast out devils. Jesus does. Okay? I've seen people say, well, I cast this out. I healed that one. I healed. No, you did not. Only through and by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, inspired by the Holy Ghost, do these things work. Amen. The only thing God needs is vessels. The Bible says that we are part of a royal priesthood. Everyone here that is born again belongs to the priesthood of Christ. Come on, brothers. Amen. God's raising you up to do some things in the world. I believe that with everything in me. I believe that God is going to raise this church to a standard that people are going to think we're a bunch of fanatics. But people that are in bondage to drugs and alcoholism and things of this nature, I believe that God is going to set them free. Amen? Those things are demonic spirits. That's right. And the Bible tells us as leaders of the church, when we walk into the house of God, we're from that point to abstain from these things. Don't be tempted. Don't walk in darkness when you can walk in the light of the Holy God. Amen? And he answered in him and said, O oh, faithless generation. <laughs> I believe the Lord's saying that to us this morning. And then he's saying it to me. Come on, brothers. Oh, faithless generation, why don't you believe what you ask for? Why don't you receive what you believe can be and the power of God can walk with you through every valley and every, every situation of your life? You don't live alone, church. We live under the inspiration of the Holy God. <laughs> oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? He knew he was coming to an end. But he knew that the work 
that he had brought to mankind was to never end. You hear me? The power of God has not ceased to exist. The power of God is still just as real today as it ever was. But we got to be willing to be used by God. <laughs> Amen. How long shall I be, on, be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Now, I want to kind of say this, how I believe Jesus said this, okay? You, you may not like this, but I believe Jesus looked at his apostles and the disciples, the believers, okay? He looked at them, and when he spoke this, he said, oh, faithless generation. He said it brokenheartedly. He spoke it because they had the power and the anointing if they would use it as he taught them to. You too. You too. We have that same power. Amen. And then he says, how long shall I be with you? I ain't going to be here forever. I'm getting ready to go to the cross. That's what he knew. How long am I going to be with you? <laughs> and I'm thinking in my mind, he was thinking to them, are you ever going to learn? Are you ever going to learn? I'm not always going to be here with you. You have to take up your rightful callings. You have to take up the power that God has available for you and realize it's not by power nor might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord, okay? We, we need to understand these things. And it says, how long shall I suffer you? <laughs> oh, boy. This to me, he's saying, how long am I going to put up with you guys? Huh? How long do I have to put up with this? I sent you to do a mission. I show up. It's not done. I'm going to ask you a question real quick. I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you have been called to do something for God and you put it off and you put it off and you put it off? Amen? Now whose fault would that be? It's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's we the people of God. Now, the disciples loved Jesus. They'd seen many miracles. They'd seen signs and wonders. They'd seen the dead raised. Amen. They'd seen the blind eyes open. They'd seen all these things happen. But yet, they did not understand that God was empowering them to do His bidding. You can open your eyes back up if you want to. God is calling man today, the church, to do what Jesus counseled us to do. When Jesus spoke to the church later on, he said, Greater things shall ye do in my name than even I have done. Huh? Greater things? <laughs> I'm just going to go through a few things Jesus has done. Amen. His first miracle was turning water into wine. It was before his time. He told his mama that. But remember, he also knew the law. Honor your father and your mother. Huh? Jesus was a man. The age of 30 went into the party, the wedding feast, and turned the water into wine. And those that tasted the wine first said, why did we save the best? To the last. Huh? God don't make junk. Amen. If God wants to give you something to drink, He'll give you something that's good. All right? Later on, He had ten lepers come up to Him. Huh? 
leprosy meant that they had been separated from all their friends and neighbors and wives or husbands. And they was pleading, crying out, heal us. Jesus spoke to them and told them to go to the temple and have the priest inspect their bodies. When Jesus healed them, they were healed. Amen? One come back. One come back from the tent and worship him. Amen? You think of that when the blind man walked up to him. And he spit in the ground and the clay and he made him a little clay and spit soup. Amen? And he rubbed it in the eyes of that man. The first thing he says, I, look my, I, I see men that look like trees. He couldn't see perfect yet. What Jesus did, he gave him another touch. Amen? See, the power of God can raise a man that's been dead for four days and stuffed in the tomb. He went <laughs> to that graveyard. Amen. Mary and Elizabeth, they was mad. Why did he just show up now? <laughs> He's been buried four days. He surely stinketh. Now, Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Jesus went to the graveyard. He stood there, and the Bible says, and Jesus wept. Why did he cry? Not because he lost Lazarus, no. He cried because of the doubt of the people. You know, if Jesus would have stood there at that grave and just hollered, come forth, I believe everybody in that grave would have come out of it. Huh? But Jesus spoke these words, Lazarus, come forth. Oh, my. Al Limp was sitting about where you're at, Wilmer, one Sunday night. It might have been a Sunday morning, I'm not so sure. He come up here, and he had a big sty on his eye. Some of you might remember that. And he looked at me. <laughs> you know what he told me? He said, spit in my eye, Brother Mike. You know what my first thought was? I ain't going to do it. My mouth went instantly dry. It's true. Some of y'all was here. He looked at me again. This is an 80-some-year-old brother. He said, I said, spit in my eye. I thought, Lord, here we go. He pulled his eyeball open as wide as he could. That sty was about as big as a penny. And I spit in his eye. And they prayed over him. By the end of that service, if y'all will remember, that sty was gone. That's the power of my God. Amen? I felt like a fool that day. <laughs> Brother Darrell, I didn't want to spit in his eye. But God had spoke to Brother Al. Al believed that if he did what God told him to do, he would be healed. Huh? How many of y'all have had that burning desire to lay hands on that one? But you think, well, maybe not. I, I remember one time in Walmart, not Walmart, the dollar store, general dollar store. Y'all have heard this before too. Sister Donna Limp, she was in there, Donna Hamilton, most of us know her for that. She wasn't feeling too well, and my mama walked down the aisle, and they run into each other. I don't know how many of y'all ever seen my mom take a shout and fit. She'd make Lisa almost being silent. Okay? Lisa gets happy in the Lord. She's going to squall and squeal. So could two of them back there. Amen? <laughs> you know, that don't bother me a bit. I was raised like that. Makes some people nervous. Donna looked at mom. She said, Sister Catherine, pray for me. They was in the aisle with the motor oil. I told y'all this before. Some of you heard it, some of you ain't. My mama reaches up, grabs a quart of motor oil, <laughs> put 
pulled the top of it off, stuck her finger in it, and ignored the sister Donna. And you know what happened? It was like Goldie and Roxanne had hit the altar. <laughs> they were squalling and shouting, amen, all over the dollar store. People probably thought somebody was killing them, but they was in the presence of a holy God, <laughs> amen. Let me tell you, church, until you feel the presence and the power of God, you don't understand it. They're calling us terrorists now, the church. They say we're uh, just a little bit off our rockers. Amen, I'm going to keep on a rocker. Amen. They call us holy rollers. <laughs> Amen. I've told you all this before. If God tells me to get in the floor and roll, just get out of my way. Amen. I'm going to do what the Lord tells me to do. <laughs> Bless God. Jesus was here. He's looking at them. And I know I'm going kind of long, but just hang on about done. Amen. <laughs> when Jesus showed up, amen, it says, <laughs> hey, hey, Jesus has got done saying, how long will I suffer them? Bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And when he saw him straightway, <laughs> the Spirit tore him. That demonic spirit could not stand the presence of Jesus Christ. You know, if you go to pray for somebody's demon possessed, if they don't know your name, that devil does. That's right. He'll call you by name. <laughs> All right. And he fell on the ground, wallowing and foaming. And he, being Jesus again, asked his father, How long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, Of a child. In other words, since this man was a child, this spirit had torn him, foaming at the mouth, could not speak, but tearing itself apart. Amen? And all of times it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. The one word in here I wish that man had not have said is if. If you can do anything. <laughs> Bless God. He was God. Jesus was God in the flesh. Sister Chelsea, when he spoke, something happened. Amen. I've seen you in a few of them shouting meetings too. Amen. <laughs> Bless God. <laughs> oh, my. You say, well, I don't believe God does these things today. I tell you what, if we turn loose and let God do what he wants to do, you'll see a whole new revelation of who God is in your life. Amen. All right. <laughs> and straightway the father of the child cried out, all right. <laughs> Let me go back to 23. Amen. Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm going to take a little poll here. How many of y'all think God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. Every hand's up. Amen. How many of y'all know God hasn't changed? Amen. His power and his anointing did not leave with him because he sent us the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. He don't just walk with us. He lives in us. Amen. That's what we, the church, need to understand. Being filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, something is going to happen. When Jesus said, if you can believe all things are possible, to him who believed. I believe that changed daddy's mindset. When we're praying for somebody, maybe we ought to ask, can you believe with me? Huh? Can you believe that the Lord could do this? Well, he'd heard probably of the many miracles that Jesus had performed. And he thought, why not believe? I'm playing the daddy now, okay? Why not believe and trust? I'll step out. And I'll put all my faith in the power of this man who is God in the flesh. 
Amen. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Amen. How many of y'all today could cry out, Lord, I believe. Amen. That's what we need to do this morning. Amen. And he rebuked the foul spirit. Amen. When Jesus saw the people come running together, in other words, everybody's got to see what's getting ready to happen. Huh? How I many of you know people are curious? Amen. How I many of y'all laid hands on somebody in the square? You know what? You get a crowd before you're done. Everybody be wanting to know what's happening. What's going on? Amen. It says, He rebuked the foul spirit, amen, saying unto him, You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you to come out of him and enter him no more. Do what? That was a powerful saying right there. The Lord didn't just kick them out. He closed the door. Huh? God don't just kick the devils out. I said he closes the door. Amen. Why? Because there's something happened to daddy. There was a spiritual awakening <laughs> that happened in daddy when tears began to flow. And he felt the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Lord, I believe. Woo. <laughs> Amen. See, that's I'm trying to teach you how to pray a little bit here this morning. We need to speak those words. Lord, I believe with faith everything you told us to do, we can do. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you to come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit, being the demon spirit, cried. <laughs> In other words, there was a vocal happening. That demon was tearing at that young man and crying out. Amen. And that spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said, he is dead. When demon spirits come out of people, they're exhausted. They've lived with that companion for years. <laughs> oh, my. There used to be a show on TV called Stargate. Is that what it's called? Is that right? And these dudes had these little worm things that would crawl in their mouth and down in their belly and hook onto their brain stem and control them. Okay? I don't know if anybody ever watched anything like that, but I did years ago. Okay, so this little, this little entity that crawled in them controlled them. And sometimes they was going back and forth between the host and the hostess. That's how it is. I thought if you've seen that, you could understand demonic presence. The demon rises up when he wants to. He'll have people tear themselves. He'll do evil things with a body that truly wasn't evil. But that's where the devil wants to control you. He'll even come into the church house and play church. Huh? That's right. But through that, you'll find confusion is entered in to when he comes into the house. And those that are sensitive has the gift of discernment will discern there's something not right. Come on, church. <laughs> See, I believe in all the gifts. I believe they're to be, be used as God wills to be used. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. And Jesus took him by the hand and lift him up, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciple asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? Why? Why could we not do this? <laughs> and he said unto them, This kind can only come forth by nothing but by prayer 
in fasting. We hear that, don't we? You hear me? This kind, amen, this was a powerful demonic force that was so tightly woven in that young man's body that he rent him and tore as he came out of him. Sometimes when you know you're facing spiritual battles, pray and fast. Prayer and fast. That is the key to spiritual power. This morning, I hope each of you's got something from this. Amen. You know, the disciples later on, <laughs> they was even arguing who was the greatest, going to be the greatest in the kingdom of Christ. They got worried about the dumbest things. Sometimes we get caught up in those emotions. We worry about things that are not fruitful. They're frivolous. And our mind strays from the truth. Don't allow those temptations to overcome you. Some may say, well, I have to sit at the head of the table. But I tell you what, when that spirit rises in you, sit as far from the head of the table as you can. Put somebody else at the head of the table. You ain't, it ain't about you. I know some of the early church, when they'd have dinner, they always set a place for Jesus. <laughs> they'd set a table. They'd set dishes for Jesus. And they'd invite him into their homes. Would you all stand with me? Sister D, you don't have to come back up here, okay? We'll do it a cappella. But I want, to, I want to ask you a question. I'm talking to the church, to the body of Christ. How many of us are willing to take the step of faith that God has called you to be? Okay? Until you take the first step, you cannot take the second, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth. It's one step at a time. As we gain the knowledge of what Christ wants from us, Jesus loved his disciples and the apostles, but yet there were times he'd say, you just don't listen to what I'm saying. That was this situation. You went into this thinking, that by your prayer, you could do this deed. And the answer is no. It's through prayer and fasting. Father, this morning, Lord, as we open this altar, Father God, I pray that you would just speak to each of us. Lord God, maybe we've been called to do so much more than we do. Maybe we're called to let our light shine brighter in the world. Maybe you're calling us to knock on doors and speak to neighbors and friends and invite them to come into the family of Christ. Lord, maybe there are those that are seeking the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, that we need to teach them. It's by faith we believe and by faith we receive the infilling of your spirit. Lord, once again, I want to say, who's it for? It's for all that believe. Lord, wash us white as snow. Lord, clothe us in that priestly garment that we can be those that lead the lost to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
morning. Just as I am without one plea, but that 